Get it! No! No! Give me the rabbit. There we go. Go, 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 go! Yes! Touchdown! I think. Well, hello and welcome back to Greg's Game Room. Now, I am a big fan of the Atari Jaguar, as you can see here. It has a lot of good games, and it has a lot of, um, bad games. But that's not what I want to talk about today. No, no, no. Today, what I want to try to do is answer the question, is the Jaguar truly a 64-bit system? All right, well, here we go. Let's get into the weeds on this one. Now, in order to figure this out, we're gonna have to decide what determines a system's bitness. So let's start with the Atari 2600. It used a single 8-bit processor by Moss Technology called the 6507. This processor had an 8-bit data bus, which is the data lines for shuffling data around inside the system. It also had 128 bytes of memory and a very simplistic video processor called the TIA. Let's compare this to the Nintendo NES, which had a similar processor, the 8-bit MOS 6502 with an 8-bit data bus, but with more memory and a better video chip called the PPU. With essentially the same processor, NES games look and sound better because most NES cartridges used more memory and included enhancement chips built into the cartridge. Lastly, let's take a look at the Sega Genesis, which is what I feel started this whole Bit Wars thing in the first place, with that in-your-face 16-bit badge on it. Yeah, 16-bit power! It has a 16-bit Motorola 68000 processor with a 16-bit data bus, 64K of memory, and a video chip called the VDP. It also has an 8-bit Z80 processor, often used for sound and backward compatibility with Sega Master System games. Okay, so hopefully what I have established is that the bitness of a system is based on the central processing unit in conjunction with the data bus. Now, let's take a look at the Jaguar's architecture, which is a little bit different and much more complex. According to the Jaguar FAQ written by Robert Jung, the system actually has a 64-bit data bus and five processors contained in three separate chips. The TOM chip contains the 32-bit graphics processor for graphic effects, the 64-bit object processor for graphics and sprites, and the 64-bit blitter for high-speed processing and shading. Then there is the Jerry chip, which is a 32-bit DSP processor for sound, and the familiar 16-bit Motorola 68000 chip used as a general purpose controller. Now all of these chips connect to the 64-bit data bus, making the determination of the Jaguar's bitness not quite as cut and dried as in the previous systems. So isn't the Motorola 68000 the main CPU making it a 16-bit system? According to designer John Matheson, It may be the CPU in the sense that it's the center of operation and bootstraps the machine and starts everything else going. However, it is not the center of the Jaguar's power. The 68000 is like a manager who does no real work, but tells everybody else what to do. <sighs> oh, man. Oh. Here we go again. Hey, graphics processor, come here. Uh, draw me a picture. Hey, graphics processor, are you done yet? Whoa. This is terrible. 
To this day, uninformed people will claim that Atari just added the two processors together to come up with the, the 64-bit number, but that's obviously not true. If they had done that, then they would have added all five processors together, and that would have been 32 plus 64 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16, which is actually 208. And we know the Jaguar is in a 208-bit system. There's actually no combination where if you were to add all three of the processors together, Tom, Jerry, and the 68,000, to where you're gonna come up with the number of 64. So to those folks making that claim, I would like to remind you of Atari's ad campaign for the Jaguar and tell you to do the math. So why does Atari call the Jaguar a 64-bit system if the CPU is only 16-bit? Well, it's thanks to the 64-bit object processor and the 64-bit data bus. When asked if the Jaguar was 64-bit, Matheson said, Jaguar has a 64-bit memory interface to get a high bandwidth out of cheap DRAM. Where the system needs to be 64-bit, then it is 64-bit. So the object processor, which takes data from DRAM and builds the display, is 64-bit. And the blitter, which does all the 3D rendering, screen clearing, and pixel shifting, is 64-bit. Where the system does not need to be 64-bit, it isn't. There is no point in a 64-bit address space in a game's console. 3D calculations and audio processing do not generally use 64-bit numbers, so there would be no advantage to 64-bit processors for this. Jaguar has the data shifting power of a 64-bit system, which is what matters for games, so can reasonably be considered a 64-bit system. But that doesn't mean it has to be 64 bits throughout. So if the Jaguar does have all this power, then why do the games look so last gen? Well, first of all, let me say that it's not the graphics or the looks of a game that determines whether a system is 16, 32, or 64 bits. Remember the Mattel in television? Its graphics are on par with the Atari 2600, which has an 8-bit CPU. And in some cases, the 2600 game looks better than the Intellivision version. But guess what? The Intellivision has a 16-bit CPU and a 16-bit data bus. That's right, nearly 10 years before the Sega Genesis started the bit war, the Intellivision was using a General Instruments CP1610 16-bit processor. So let's address those last-gen looking Jaguar games such as Theme Park, Syndicate, Cannon Fodder, Flashback, Zool 2, and Bubsy for just a moment. Oh, sure. let's all torch the bumpster. Now imagine you're a developer interested in making a Jaguar game. You read the documentation and learn just how complex the system is. You realize that getting the most out of it is going to take a lot of work, resources, and dedication. But wait just a second it does have that familiar Motorola 68000 chip in it. Wouldn't it be easier to just port an older game to the Jaguar from a computer system like the Amiga, Atari ST, or <gasps> the Sega Genesis? And many developers did exactly that, ported their games over. And in my opinion, it really hurt the Jaguar's reputation as a next-gen system. But not all developers took the easy way out. Some of them did put the Jaguar's power to good use, and it shows. Games such as Doom, Alien vs. Predator, Iron Soldier, Missile Command 3D, Battlesphere, Tempest 2000, and even lesser quality games like Cybermorph, Checkered Flag, and Club Drive demonstrate graphics and abilities not possible on 16-bit systems at the time. Keep in mind that the Genesis and Super Nintendo needed additional processors to achieve games such as Virtual Racing, Star Fox, and Doom, chips that were not needed in the Jaguar architecture. It's pretty obvious to me that the Jaguar is not a 16-bit system simply because some games look like last gen or because it included a 16-bit Motorola 68000 processor. There are some games on the Jaguar that 16-bit systems can't do, but is it 64-bit? Again, from the fact Robert Jung wrote, for the record, the opinion of most third-party developers and observers is that the Jaguar is indeed a 64-bit system. The emphasis is on the word system. While not every component is 64 bits, the Jaguar architecture as a complete system is. Some of you believe your system is the most advanced in the universe. Let's review the numbers. 
Sega Genesis is 16 bits. 3DO is 32 bits. The Atari Jaguar is 64 bits. Which is more advanced? Clifford! Huh? Can you repeat the question? Jaguar! 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 So there you have it. Hopefully I have convinced you that the Jaguar's bitness is not based on looks alone and that it is truly a 64-bit system. You know, in the right hands, it could be used to create some truly amazing games. All right, well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye, everybody. All right, time to get back to my 16-bit looking game here. Give me that ball. Give me, oh yeah. Throw it, throw it. Go, get, get up there. No, no, get, no, you can't have that. Ah, oh, come on. Just can't get ahead in this game. Hmm. <sighs> <sighs>